Hi everyone, in this tutorial we will talk about integration and differentiation of power series. Let's take an arbitrary power series, let's say we have summation from 0 to infinity a sub n x to the power n. This is a standard power series with the center located at 0. We know that this power series represents a function, let's call that function f of x, and we can find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence of this power series. Let's look at the following example and quickly review these two concepts. Let's say I have the following power series, summation from 0 to infinity, x to the power n divided by 7 to the power n plus 1. And I can compute the radius of convergence and interval of convergence for this power series by using the ratio test. And when you apply the ratio test here, you will see that radius of convergence is 7 and the interval of convergence is open interval from negative 7 to positive 7. All right. So this is something you already know and you have done some problems in your last homework assignment. Here in this tutorial we will see a little bit more about power series but first let's remember why we are interested in power series at the first place. Remember we talked about this earlier and we noticed that <coughs> it is very easy to integrate or differentiate polynomials. After that observation we know that power series are nothing but infinite polynomials so they can be integrated and differentiated rather quickly and the trick is we can differentiate and integrate the power series term by term. The, he, the, the, the key part here, we can only do this on the interval of convergence. But as long as we are on the interval of convergence, we can differentiate or integrate a power series term by term. So that's the key idea. So here <clears throat> I stated this idea in the following theorem. So let's say we have a power series, summation from 0 to infinity, a sub n, x to the power n. So let's say this power series represents this function f of x. When I write out this power series, the first term will be a sub 0, the second one will be a sub 1x, the next one will be a sub 2x squared, and so on. All right. When I differentiate this function f, I get a new function f prime of x. And the trick is I can get the power series representation for this derivative function by differentiating each term inside this sigma. So let's start with the longhand notation. So when I take derivative of f, I have to take derivative of this right hand side. What's the derivative of a sub 0? a sub 0 is a constant, so derivative is 0. Derivative of a sub 1x is a sub 1, so I put it down. Derivative of a sub 2x squared is 2 times a sub 2x. Derivative of a sub 3x cubed is 3 times a sub 3x squared, and so on. So this is the derivative of f. When I look at the sigma notation, I get the following. I'm differentiating a sub n is constant, I'm differentiating x to the power n, so derivative of that will be, n will come down, I will have the constant term a sub n, and I will have x to the power n minus 1. And the summation will start from 1, right? Because derivative of a sub 0 was 0, and I don't write it down, so the summation starts from 1 here. Okay, so that's the power series representation for the derivative function. What about, what about the indefinite integral of this function? I have this function f and I can integrate that. When I integrate that, I get a new function here and I can ask the following question. What's the power series representation for this new integral function? And the answer is very easy. Again, I can integrate term by term. I can integrate this term inside the sigma notation. Here a sub n is a constant. What's the integral of x to the power n? It is x to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1. So here we have the power series representation for the integral function. But here there is something we have to careful about. That's this arbitrary constant c. So before I say anything about that, let me 
check these terms next to that arbitrary constant c here i'm integrating a sub zero the integral of a sub zero is a sub zero times x i'm integrating a sub one x which is a sub one over two x squared and so on and now let's talk about this arbitrary constant c remember when i integrate a function when this integral is an indefinite integral i have to insert this arbitrary constant c so that's the reason why i have this arbitrary constant c here and in different problems we will be able to figure out what this c is depending on the given function all right so here we have something important I can find the power series for a derivative or for an integral by either differentiating or integrating the original power series. Moreover, these two new power series, they will have the same radius of convergence and the same interval of convergence with this first original power series. So this is very helpful and we will use this idea in many problems on, on your assignment for Wednesday night. All right, so let's do a couple of examples. Let's look at the following ex problem. Let's say I want to find the power series expansion for the following function, ln of 5 minus x. So far, we haven't seen any power series related to any ln terms, right? For ln terms, we haven't done anything. So what should we do? Here the trick is the following. This function ln of 5 minus x is not something I've seen before in the power series context, but I have something, I know something about another function which is very much related to ln. So that's the direction that we will pursue. So let's look at the following. Let's say instead of ln I had 1 over 5 minus x. As you can imagine, we can find the power series representation for this function, right? This is like the very first problem I did in this tutorial. Namely, this is nothing but a geometric series, right? So how do I find the power series representation for this function? 1 over 5 minus x is 1 over 5, factor this 5 out, then I have 1 over 1 minus x over 5, right? And this is the geometric series that we discussed earlier. So I know that this parentheses has a power series representation like this. Summation from zero to infinity, x over five to the power n. And I still have this constant one over five in front of the sigma notation. Then I can put this inside and separate the exponents here. And I get summation from zero to infinity, x to the power n divided by five to the power n plus one. So this is an easy power series computation. Moreover, I know the radius of convergence is 5 and the interval of, interval of convergence is from negative 5 to 5. So this was a, an easy power series computation. The question is, how can I use this power series and this function to find the power series expansion for this function? What's the relation between this function, ln of 5 minus x, and this function? And as you see already, they are kind of related, right? What's the relation between them? All right, the relation is simple. When I take the derivative of ln of 5 minus x, what do I get? By the chain rule, I get negative 1 over 5 minus x, right? So, but I know the power series expansion for this part, for this right-hand side term. So that means, remember, the power series expansion for this right-hand side is Remember now, insert this extra minus sign. It is negative summation from 0 to infinity, x to the power n divided by 5 to the power n plus 1. So this means I know the power series expansion for the derivative of this function, ln of 5 minus x. In the original problem, I don't want to have this derivative here. So how can I get rid of this derivative here? Let's think about it. And, yes, I have to integrate both sides, right? So how do we get rid of the derivative? By integration. So, and by the theorem, I know that I can integrate each term inside the sigma notation separately. So let's go ahead and do that. Then when I take the integral, I will get ln of 5 minus x. 
and here I'm integrating x to the power n over 5 to the power n plus 1. Integral of x to the power n is x to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1. And I still have 5 to the power n plus 1 here. And don't forget this arbitrary constant c here. Here in the sigma notation, as you see here, I have n plus 1, n plus 1, n plus 1. So when I shift the index, I can replace this n plus 1, this n plus 1, and that n plus 1 by just n, and I can start my summation from 1. So that makes the power series a little bit nicer looking, but I still have that arbitrary constant c. So the next question is, how can I find this arbitrary constant c? Remember, the idea was to plug in x equals 0 to both sides of this identity. When I plug x equals 0, this power series will disappear. And on the left-hand side, I will get ln of 5. So c will be ln of 5. So I know what c is, so I can write down the answer for the original problem. In power series representation of ln of 5 minus x is ln of 5 minus summation from 1 to infinity x to the power n divided by n times 5 to the power n. Okay, so here I found the power series expansion of this one by using the power series expansion for 1 over 5 minus x and I also use that theorem and I integrated the power series term by term. All right. So this was a nice example. Let's look at another example. By the way, the radius of convergence of this new power series is still 5, and the interval of convergence is still from negative 5 to 5. The radius of convergence or the interval of convergence doesn't change after this operation. All right, let's look at another problem. Let's find the power series expansion for this new function, x over 1 plus 8x quantity square. So this is another new function for us. If I would have just 1 over 8 plus x at the denominator without this square, then I could solve this problem quickly, again by using geometric series. But the question is, how can I take care of this quantity square here? Again, let's start with the power series of something simpler. Let's say I have 1 over 8 plus x, and as I said, we know how to find the power series for this, because this is a geometric sum. So let's factor 8 out at the denominator. I get 1 over 8, 1 over 1 minus negative x over 8. And we know that this parentheses has the following power series, summation from 0 to infinity, negative x over 8 to the power n. And I still have this 1 over 8 outside. When I regroup the terms, I have negative 1 to the power n, x to the power n at the top. At the denominator, I have 8 to the power n. But when I put this 8 inside, I get 8 to the power n plus 1. All right. This is a nice power series. I know that the radius of convergence is 8, and the interval of convergence is from negative 8 to 8. Okay. How can I use this function? to find the power series expansion for this one. What's the relation between this function and this function? As you can see here, this x at the numerator is nothing important, and I can find the relation between this and this expression without x in it very quickly. So what's that relation? Again, I have a differentiation going on. When I take the derivative of 1, plus eight, 1 over 8 plus x, I get negative 1 over 8 plus x quantity squared. What do I know about this parentheses here? I have a power series expansion for this one, right? So let's write it out. Here is the power series expansion for 1 plus 1 over 8 plus x. So let's take this power series and put it in this parentheses here. In that case, I will get the sort of a nice expression for negative 1 over 8 plus x, namely negative 1 over 8 plus x quantity square is the derivative of this power series here. What I did, I took this power series and plugged that in into this parentheses here. So I get derivative of this power series. But remember the theorem, I can differentiate term by term. Here I can just differentiate x to the power n. So let's see what we get. I get negative 1 over 
8 plus x quantity square is, I still have negative 1 to the power n. When I differentiate x to the power n, I get n times x to the power n minus 1. And I still have the same denominator, 8 to the power n plus 1. All right. Remember, we were interested in x over 8 plus x quantity square. So let's multiply both sides by negative 1. So I get an extra minus sign here. And let's multiply both sides of this first line by x. When I multiply this power series by x, I can put that x inside. And I can change the exponent of x here to n only. Okay? All right. Moreover, I can take this negative sign here and put it inside negative 1. That will raise the power of negative 1 to n plus 1. So now I have the power series expansion for the original function. The summation from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the power n plus 1 times n, x to the power n, a to the power n plus 1. Again, the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence are still the same. They don't change at all. Okay. So you have a couple of problems about this idea in the most, uh, the, the very late web assign that's due tomorrow uh, or Wednesday night. So you can look at those problems. There is one extra idea that we will discuss tomorrow in class, but uh, let's keep it for tomorrow in class and you can just go and do related problems from the assignment 10.6 uh, after watching this tutorial. All right.